To begin this lab, you're going to need a few supplies. First, you'll need uh, some pea gravel or, or aquarium gravel, some sand, doesn't matter what kind, and some larger rocks. And of course, sugar cubes. Notice what the sugar cubes look like when you take them out of the package. They are perfectly square uh, with sharp edges and uh, nice and white. Okay, in part one of the lab, we are going to uh, mix our ingredients together into a closed container. The lab says to use a cup, but it actually works better if you use a Tupperware container. So we're going to add the sand, the gravel, and uh, the larger rocks all together into our Tupperware container. See that there's a good mix of material there. Then we're also going to drop in several of our sugar cubes. Now our sugar cubes in this case represent uh, the rocks that we're going to be studying. Toss a few of those in for good measure. Top it off with a little bit more sand. And then we are going to uh, close the lid and shake it up. Question one, what do you think will happen to the sugar cubes after shaking the container? Okay, let's give this a nice vigorous shake uh, for several minutes and then we'll look at what happens to the sugar cubes. Okay, let's open it up and take a look. Uh, you can see our sugar cubes are no longer nice and white. Uh, they look really dirty now. We'll pull as many of them out as we can find. I want to compare them to the nice uh, fresh sugar cube. You'll notice that the sharp edges have worn away. Uh, the weathered uh, sugar cube is more rounded, uh, and if we were to shake them up even longer, they probably would become more rounded. Question two, what happened to the sugar cubes within the container after being mixed with the sand and gravel? Question three, imagine that the sugar cubes represent rocks. Where might a similar process happen naturally? In part two of the experiment, we're going to add a little bit of warm water to our container and see what happens to the sugar cubes as we mix them in with uh, the sand, the gravel, and the warm water. Question number four, what do you think will happen to the sugar cubes after shaking the container this time with the added water? Okay, now that we've added our sugar cubes, let's give this a good swirl. This won't take nearly as long as the, uh, the dry mix took. And then we'll see what happens to the sugar cubes. Let's open it up. And we'll dig through this to try to find a sugar cube to see what happened. Uh, this is actually a white rock, not a sugar cube. Uh, you'll see it's not uh, soft like the sugar cube should be. Obviously something happened to the sugar cubes. They've mostly disappeared. Here's one small piece. And we'll check it to make sure it's sugar. Uh, yeah, so it breaks apart really, really easily now, and it is almost completely dissolved. To compare, there's a sugar cube right out of the box, and one of the rounded sugar cubes from the first part of the experiment. Question number five. What happened to the sugar cubes in part two? How did this result differ from the result in part one? 
Question number six. Did the addition of the water change the result? Why do you think this happened? Question number seven. If the sugar cubes represent rocks, where might this process occur in nature? Rocks and minerals that are exposed on the Earth's surface are subject to weathering and erosion. Weathering is a process by which rocks and minerals are broken into smaller and smaller pieces. A great example of mechanical weathering in nature is called abrasion. Abrasion happens with wind-blown material like sand when it bumps up against a harder, more resistant material. Slowly over time, wind-blown sand can blast away pieces of uh, sandstone like what's found in Arches National Park. Over time, that wind-blown sand, as well as erosion, picking up and carrying away bits and pieces of what's been broken down, can result in landscapes like you see here. Chemical weathering, on the other hand, breaks rocks and minerals down at the molecular level, actually changing the chemistry of the rocks themselves. A great example of this process is the dissolution of limestone where slightly acidic groundwater can actually dissolve away limestone bedrock. This process is how caves are formed, like Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico. Over time, this dissolved limestone can actually be redeposited and form some of the stalactites and stalagmites and cave features that are commonly found. Question number eight, which part of the lab modeled mechanical weathering? Question number nine, which part of the lab modeled chemical weathering? 